Hello everybody, here we are today talking about the Arizona Coyotes and how bad they were in their 27 seasons in the state of Arizona. So before we start, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get on into it. So there's nothing official that the team is relocating to Utah at the moment. Time of recording, tonight is their last game. But instead of focusing on the future, like everybody's doing at the moment, I wanted to talk about their past. So this team in 1996, it comes on over from Winnipeg, and then they are the Phoenix Coyotes up until 2014. Then they rebrand and become the Arizona Coyotes. So in those 27 seasons, being named the Coyotes, regardless of if it's Phoenix or Arizona, they make the playoffs nine times, which doesn't seem bad once every three seasons. But you look at the fact that they only made the playoffs once after 2012, that being the qualifying round, and the fact that they only made it out of the first round once, you can kind of see where the problem lies. So the 2012 team was the only side able to get out of the first round. They made it to the Western Conference Final, and they lost the eventual champions, the Los Angeles Kings, in five games. Very heartbreaking, but still the best season that they had to date, and even afterwards, they are still looking at this and saying, man, that was really nice. And it was really nice. It was part of their golden era as from 2010 through 2012. They made the playoffs all three years, won a division title, and then, of course, made it to the conference final. All of these things were really something that made you feel positive about where the team could be. This was the only time where they cracked 100 plus points in a season. They had 107 in 2010. This was the only time that they cracked 50 plus wins in a season as well. A very good period for them in these three years were the only times two where they won more than half of their games. Every other season, the remaining 24 seasons, they didn't kind of highlighting how poorly things went at times. And this, if it was the mountain, was something you wanted to focus on and daydream about because the nightmares were coming. And that's because 2015 through 2024, things get really, really bad. They finished bottom of their division three times and second worst three other occasions. They were bottom three in the league four times over the past 10 years, and this is where this version of the Coyotes seems to stick around. They weren't super great after 2012. They weren't terrible. But once 2015 rolls around, I think a lot of the talk becomes about how the Coyotes don't belong here, especially. I know it was even way back in the day, but it becomes more and more problematic as the team seems to struggle to perform on the ice. Over these past 10 seasons, or every season after 2012, I should say, they only had one year where they were able to crack the 80-point mark. To be fair to them, they did have one season where they probably would have been able to do that. The lockout year, the shortened year, where they got to the qualifying round. They were at an 87-point pace, but during most years, that's not really going to be a wildcard type season. And it's not even really all about team success. I think individual success is something that kind of held back this team. Looking at a lot of the records, Shane Doan, of course, holds a lot of them, which isn't a problem. But even looking at things like single-season stats, Keith Kachuk and Clayton Keller hold the mark for the most points in a season, where they're both tied with 86. That's not a problem, but for a team that's been around for nearly 30 years in one region, to not have somebody crack 90 points does seem a little bit odd to me. Other players or other teams will have multiple players crack 100 points in one year, and was just something that I found a little bit odd, meaning maybe they're having a hard time bringing in talent or retaining talent or just being able to get guys through the draft that could make this team into what they would like to be. Some teams, of course, are going to be a little bit different where they're thinking we're more of a defensive side, which you see a lot with these expansion or newer teams when they get into a region, especially in the time period of the 90s. you got to think, too, at this time, that would have been kind of the start of the dead puck era, but just something to look out for there. I looked at this, too, looking at a guy like Lawson Kraus. He is 13th all-time already for career points with the team. Kind of concerning, considering that he is a guy that's played eight seasons with them, is 26 years old, and has averaged under 16 minutes in his career. And somebody that doesn't even have 200 points should not be in your top 15, even after 30 years, or especially after 30 years, I should say. Not a shot at Lawson, just something that sticks out to me where that's kind of problematic. If that's the case, I could tell you without knowing a whole lot of the situation about the team, and just hearing that, I would say this team could be in trouble. And I know that Doan did have some things that went right for him, and of course he won some awards for doing community work, but they really only had the GM of the year and the coach of the year awards that went in their favor. Not having individuals that are in the hunt for things like the heart or things like the Vesna, not winning them I should say, kind of problematic because if you're not a team that is terrific on the ice, if you're not going to be able to have a lot of guys that are going to have big offensive years and you aren't able to see some of these players win an award and kind of draw in some fans for that interest, that is 
something that could hold you back. Now, there are some years where, of course, they had guys that were more likely to be in contention for these awards than other seasons, but the fact remains, from what I could find online, none of them won a major award. Pair this with the fact that the team had an inability to find a long-term home and they had some ownership that was problematic. Hearing reports, and this is not something that even relates to recent years, I've heard of this even just a few years ago where the team was not paying hospital, or excuse me, hotel bills when they were traveling around. You can see why the NHL is unfortunately giving up on the market for now. I think they want to be able to bring something back here and build on it and have something that is better suited because after 30 seasons with what we've seen, this is a team that hasn't been able to get out of the gutter just yet. They haven't been able to go out there and achieve big things and they're still looking to have a place to call their own that is, you know, state of the art. So, I am not thrilled about this. I hate to see how this could be ending because people say hockey doesn't belong in the desert. Look at what they had to deal with, especially over the past 10 years. This has been a really bad team, and it looks like now where they're starting to get a lot of their prospects, and even Don Sun, you could see this team maybe turning into something better. Maybe not a team that was going to go out there and win a division. Maybe not even a team that right away even if at all, would win 50 games in a year, but would give fans a reason to actually go to the games and to be excited about. So I just hate to think that this is going to be the final game here against the Oilers tonight. And obviously my channel didn't exist back in 2011 when the Thrashers moved to Winnipeg, but I do feel a bit of sadness, actually more than a bit of sadness, I do feel really sad seeing a fan base lose their team. And it is nice seeing some things where an account like Coyote Central is getting a lot of fans together outside of the stadium for tonight's game where they can kind of share some memories. It still is frustrating that they're going there to share these memories because this is the end for this team. Whether or not they come back is still up in the air. I'd like to think they would because, again, it does seem like the NHL is favoring expansion. But we really don't know. We know that Utah is probably on the brink of getting it within a matter of days, if not weeks. So this could be it. And this is something where you could look at it and say, they have to be better. Look at the past 27 years. Bad results, bad leadership, and then, of course, no place to call their own means that you're in a spot where they just give up because that's what they thought would be best. And I would say for Coyotes fans, it's weird because in an alternate universe, maybe you get past the Kings and you win at Stanley Cup in 2012 against the Devils. They were the sixth seed that year, I believe. Who knows? Maybe something would have changed there. I hate to think about that and reminisce on it if you were a fan saying, what if we would have done this? But I guess in an alternate universe, you can kind of daydream about them winning at least the 2012 Stanley Cup and then things going right for them. Still, though, this is a sad day for hockey, and we're going to wonder what happens in the coming days. Seeing the Coyotes not even posting a lot of stuff anymore is frustrating, but it is the reality. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the Arizona Coyotes in their past 27 seasons with them being in the NHL, the poor results, all that stuff? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. This will be the last video until Friday when I get all my playoff previews out. By the time you see this, I'm going to be taking playoff preview notes. Anyway, everybody, please make sure to stay safe. Have a great night. Eagle of Hawk, y'all. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.